So welcome everyone to our Chaos App Ecosystem Working Group meeting. Today is June 14, 2021, Monday. And we haven't recorded a meeting in a while because usually we just chat about random stuff. <laughs> uh, but today we wanted to record it and have a more serious meeting. I, I didn't warn you about that. <laughs> Um, <laughs> sorry, what was that? It's also a part social club. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just like to hang out. <laughs> That's not true. You were doing some work last time that I was here. So I don't know where we get this social chat only. <laughs> we worked on a new persona, people. <laughs> I thought we actually recorded that one. Maybe we I don't know. <laughs> so one of the things we have in the pipeline is a blog post about using event metrics. Mm -hmm. And Nuritsi, you were kind enough to put your name on that action. <laughs> Has it to do, and I have been terrible about that. So I wasn't really involved in the Linux App Summit this year. Um, but what I thought what we could do is see if, like, check in with that team and see what was recorded this year. Sri, were you more involved in Neo? I, I was involved up until the conference, and I didn't attend it. Basically. Okay. It all I did all the 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 like fundraising and all the other bits, mm -hmm. but I didn't, I didn't attend it myself. So that's sadly enough. So we we kind of always poke Alison and she she's on top of everything there. So yeah, yeah. Any detail we want, I'm sure she'll be happy to give it. Yeah. Okay. We the, mm -hmm. go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was just thinking that. Um, I think Allison on the KDE side is a great resource. And I was wondering, Shri, if Christy was still involved as well, so that there's also like the GNOME side of things for the metrics. Was there an after survey done, for example? Do you yes, know? there, there okay, was cool. a survey done. Um, and uh, uh, we actually went over it in one of the meetings, uh, right? OK. I think it was in the last meeting, yeah, for the wrap up. Yeah, and uh, and Kenny has all the participant stats, and, uh, and uh, so overall, uh, the the TLDR is that uh, this conference has gained more followers and has increased its participation uh, in terms of exposure. So, uh, but our diversity numbers and other numbers continue to be static, and so we still have. Um, uh, work ahead of us uh, in terms of improving those things. Uh, okay. So if we're going to relate it to this, we had, you know, collecting those numbers and then trying to do something through here would, would be a, an interesting exercise. Okay. Um, I just took a couple of notes. So I think the next steps for that are to, maybe what we can do is create an issue about this on the um, LAS board and see if we can get the information needed to do a bit more of an analysis. I know last year I helped out with creating like a visual report. Um, I can see if Allison has everything she needs for that because we basically just like kind of copied over the work that I had done for the previous summit. Um, so I'll just, I can check in with Allison about that. So let's see, this is a more tangible to do is Naritzi to create an issue, create an issue um, on the LAS board to ask for metrics info and see if Allison has um, everything she needs for the visual report. And then we can take those learnings and, um, and turn it into a blog post here on for this group.
Okay. All right. Thank you all. I think that's, that's it for this agenda item. So one, one uh, of the questions that I had from the work we did last year is how helpful our recommended metrics are for event organizers. So I, I think that was where the blog post, at least in my mind, was uh, trying to capture what, what, is, what are helpful metrics. And so I, I think that approach is good. And I'm also wondering whether we could invite maybe Kenny, since I see the name here, to have a chat with us and talk about the other metrics that we thought might be helpful and why they weren't collected, if it was just a simple, we didn't think about it in advance, or whether there are actual flaws or issues with the metric. Yeah, that would, we could do that. Um, uh, but we have we have academy coming up next week, so Kenny would be extremely busy with that. But I guess by the time our next call is, he should be able to join us, or maybe the one after that. Yeah, after academy, right? That's in two weeks, correct? It starts on Friday and lasts for a week. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. So this coming Friday. Yep. Oof. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Kenny, Kenny is doing last in Academy back to back this year, but yeah. Yeah, and then you probably need some time off. So we should probably schedule it out a little bit. Cool. Okay, I captured that in the notes. I think that's a really good idea and good point. Because I think that part of what um, we'll need to do is both get better at like creating and creating outreach around this so like sharing this with people um and putting it in a more digestible format with maybe like tools suggestions or again kind of help make it a little bit more tangible so that people can actually implement them okay. yep i agree all right any more thoughts before we end this agenda item? Nope. All right. So next step, back over to you, Georg. Um, let's see. We had, um, I'm trying to see if there was anything else on the other agenda. As far as I know, we were just going to continue working on the promotions and communications team persona. Yeah. Now we actually have all of us here. So maybe we can recap real quick where we are, because I know some of us have been out of the loop for a little bit. And it's been a month since we met. So right now, just to <laughs> give you the TLDR, it's a mess. <laughs> uh, we've started collecting a lot of ideas and tried to organize them around promotions communications team. Um, we have recruiting new contributors. Mm -hmm. We had the question around who do we need to recruit? What kind of skills or roles and responsibilities? One of the ideas we had was a network diagram, which Sri and I talked about three weeks ago. We have some notes there we can dive into. Um, I think we've really focused on, on recruiting here at the top part. And then brand, we have some ideas around brand, but we have spent far less time on brand. And then everything else is much less developed. So I feel like we need to organize on this a little bit and maybe recruiting new contributors seems to be a topic 
that is big enough by itself. Maybe finalize this before we move on to the others and write a blog post about this and share this and keep it really narrowly focused on on one topic. Just a thought. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, you're you're laughing, Sri. What's up? <laughs> no, because I had done this, and then I was pointing to it. So. Oh. <laughs> And the funny thing is, on my side, the thumb is on the opposite. So you're pointing <laughs> to one and the thumb was on the other. <laughs> OK. Sorry, it looked visually more amusing on, on my side. <laughs> yeah. OK. OK, well, I mean, I think that we've done actually quite a bit of work on this. So I might just be yeah, cleaning it up and making it look better. Yeah. I see two, three, three paths forward. One, we work in this document and clean it up. Two, we leave this document as is and organize our ideas by writing the blog post. So we open the new document and just start writing the blog post based on these ideas and structure it you know, for a blog post. And three, we dive into the network diagram discussion that Sri and I have. Those are three paths forward that I see right now. Do we consider the current state of this section complete? Did I mean, okay. No, I mean, so I think that we should have somewhat replicable mechanisms for the output that we do in this group. And what I mean by that is that for the last thing that we worked on the last persona, one of our deliverables was having this for reference in the blog post, like the, the set of metrics. So I think that we should absolutely like clean this up and make sure that it's something that we can post on GitHub so that in the end, once we're finished with all the personas, you can see all of these as like deliverables from our group. Um, so I, I think that that should be our number one priority because then also since not everybody weighed in, we can, you know, like we can get in, make sure that everybody agrees on it um, and that we haven't missed anything. And then we write the blog post. So my suggestion would be to standardize this first or like clean it up. I, I'm okay with that, yeah. Sounds like a good idea. Thank you for nudging us in one direction. <laughs> I'm a good nudger. <laughs> so with that, can can yeah. someone please maybe, I, I agree and that's fine. I, I think the way to go as Nuiji suggested, but could someone please put me in the loop about the network diagram thing you mentioned because I missed it in the last call, I think, and probably discuss it there. Shri, do you want to? Talk about it, like the short version. Yeah, <laughs> the short version is is that we could use a, a network diagram to kind of understand uh, what a team might be missing in terms of its resources, right? So, uh, it, think of it like the number of links, right? So, the more a team is stressed because it has too many links, right? So, it, think of it like rebalancing a tree or whatever it's it's the idea that um you can make a team less stressed by mapping out all its responsibilities and say wow there's two like let's say a maintainer has all these responsibilities right and you can visually connect them to all these things well if you can use if you can look at a network diagram you you can see it visually you could find ways to rebalance. And so if you know how to rebalance, then you kind of know how what kind of resources you need to, to make, the, let's say like a maintainer has all these things, right, for a team. So that means, okay, we might need more Q&A or maybe something so that you can reduce the number of connections from the maintainer to the task. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Does that in, make sense? In this sense, what is a network diagram? So is it like, 
release team here and like who is part of the release team we have okay. we have a visual okay cool <laughs> so this is an you interesting see what I'm visual showing? <laughs> yep. we're, we're playing with uh I visually see it. <laughs> I'm not sure I understand it. <laughs> but it's a, I, I don't know if it's a new idea or not, but it, it it seemed logical to to try to do it this way and use graph theory to to kind of figure out programmatically maybe. Hmm. So you're combining tasks, roles, and people, or is that are all those just open ended questions of like what would the nodes be? Right, so you have roles and you have tasks and then how many people. So if, if you have uh, these many roles and all mm. these tasks and then all these, oh, I see. then you combine them in a map and then like, okay, if it looks like there's too many spokes going, like there's too many roles mm -hmm. for people and they have all these tasks, then you realize if you look at the graph, that's like, okay, this team is stressed, <laughs> right? I see. I think it, it needs to have some sort of weighting on um, how how time consuming a task actually is because you can you know I could I could give you kind of the the TLDR version of the tasks I do or I could mm -hmm. really dig into it and make a really long list and it's just a matter of how I kind of subdivide it and right you know just because I list ten things uh, you know that could be less time consuming than two things that you you know list for your that's true for example that's so, true yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Some some tasks are more laborious and yeah. take a lot more. I mean, so sometimes the the weight is more on an edge, so to speak, because uh, and they may be worth five links or something. I mean, if you just sort of put it that way, right? So, so interestingly, we just recorded a Chaos Cast episode with Tim and Matthew from Drupal. And they shared that the Drupal community is allowing members to indicate roles or tasks or whatever in their profile. So maybe we should follow up with them and to see if they have some data where we can try this out. Oh yeah, they were they were going to. There was some idea that they were going to occasionally jump in here, right? I think at one point I don't, I don't remember. That's cool. Uh, it would be great to maybe have them talk about it here, or, or we could look at that as a maybe a future, you know, talk or not talk, but just discussion. Okay. So Neo, got you caught up, all right, or more confused? <laughs> no, no, it makes sense now. Awesome. Uh, I. I I can't link it like directly to the current persona. It sounds like a bit more general that could fit into other personas as well. But yeah, other than that, I don't have any other question. Yeah, the idea I guess there is that one of the things that promoters will do is try to do outreach that you know gets new recruits. And so in order for them to do that effectively, they need to understand like who they need to recruit for. And so that's why I think it was all this information of like, who is even part of our community? What roles do we need? Yep. It makes okay. sense now, thanks. <laughs> all the things explained, fantastic. <laughs> we can move on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so standardizing the doc. Yep, I think we can focus on, on the top part that is goal one and ignore the rest. Do you mind sharing your screen again, Georg? I always find that really helpful. Sure. I was not sharing my screen because I was hoping we could work asynchronously and not. Ah, when, okay. When I share my screen, the, the challenge I find is that everyone looks at my screen and you're not in the document typing yourself. And you have to wait for me to interact with the document. That's my assumption. Okay. I mean, I am happy to do it myself instead. Um, but I do think that since we need to all agree on these and we're not just brainstorming anymore, that 
it helps to have somebody share their screen. Do you yeah. want to share the screen? I'm, I'm happy to let you drive it. Sure. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me just resize these windows. Excellent. Uh, okay, can everybody see? Maybe that's too big. It's fine okay. for me. Okay, perfect. All right, so um, let me just move these controls out of the way because they're really annoying. Okay. So the first one, here we go. New goals, recruit new contributors based on skills needed in the community. Okay, so that's just what we discussed. So the first question that we had is what skills do we need to recruit for? And I, do we know why these were crossed out? List of tasks needed to be done. Does anyone have context on why those were crossed out? Nope, okay. So I might need to revisit these. Um, but so the metrics that seem to have been agreed upon are one, um, identify specific tasks and roles to recruit for. Um, that, yep, that's, <laughs> but that doesn't really answer any of the question. What skills do we need to recruit for? And then we have to identify the specific tasks and roles to recruit for. Um, so maybe this is like the metric Yeah, okay, well, let's just read through all these. Okay, metric, role coverage in community, mm -hmm. create a list of roles in community, list members active for each role, and consider how sufficiently a role is executed by existing members. This seems more complete, that makes sense. And it seems like a duplication of this. Should I just go ahead and strike this one out since this doesn't give us a lot of information. Yeah, right. sure. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think the difference here is just whether we use task role. Um, yeah. I think, you know, just remove it before we go back okay. next week and like, why did we strike this out? Let's just remove it. Well, I was just going to put a note. On the... Yeah, that's a good idea. Seems. So yeah, go ahead. I put a comment that seemed like a duplicate. So that yeah. way. That's a good idea. Okay. Um, okay, so the next metric that we have here is ask community members what kind of help they would appreciate in, a, in the project. So that might be through a survey. That's, I think that's a bit problematic um, because a lot of times I don't think they may know. Um, like sometimes you have to interpret what they say and then realize, okay, they need this, right? It's, it's like maintainers, maybe a fog of war kind of thing where they don't even know their stress, but they don't know exactly what the step, steps needed. And that, that, could, that could be like for younger, younger members versus like mature members, right? So. Yes, and I wonder if there's, oh, go ahead. I, I do uh, I think that's a fair point, but I do think that it's, it's asking people what they think they need is um, a data point. Yep. I, my, it may not I guess what she point, means but... is not by asking them in a quantitative way, but maybe by discussing with them, you can figure out things more. Okay, so actually that's a really interesting point. We have um, perhaps like a survey and also focus groups or something like that, because there's the quantitative data and then the qualitative data. So in, does that sound right? Like that we need kind of both data points? Okay, so it might not be just a survey. So format could be survey and 
a focus group session or something like that, focus group discussion. Yeah, they, I think the, the focus group and discussion is an important part of this. Um, and I'll give you um, a, a, an example. So in the GNOME community, um, there's a lot of stress uh, by maintainers in regards to the Google Summer of Code because they have to mentor while also doing their maintainership duties. I'm, I'm sure this is probably true in many other communities, but uh, a lot of times they don't know exactly what's missing. And so it wasn't until we had a discussion between maintainers and um, the, the interns about what they were feeling or anything. And, and so that between the two of them, it was like, oh, okay. So things like, we need an introduction of what GNOME is, right? There's no introduction to like, uh, like an intro video. This is what GNOME is. This is what its values are, you know? So because there's not, no anchor uh when they join and doing work for GSOC so if you think of like summer camp um some this may not be for everyone might understand what I mean but like they go to summer camp and there's a there's a kind of a, a the first thing you walk into is this is camp something and these are the rules and these are the things that's that is missing is is sort of is, uh is what we oh, really okay so what you're saying is that sometimes orientation it's easy to understand like what is missing on a higher perspective but you, people might not necessarily know what goes into creating that or like filling that gap it's just like we need this and this and so they right. identify specific deliverables that they'd like to see they, something like they, that. so yeah the discussion shows not only what the requirements are, but possible solutions um, that could be discussed. This is really what I was trying to get at, so. Okay. Identify not only what's needed, but generates ideas for how to solve. Okay. Then, then it becomes a lot clearer because, because what happens is, it, it's a cycle. It's the same thing, pattern being repeated over and over again, mm -hmm. but it doesn't keep get easier like it should, right? That, that's an amendment. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, so does everyone agree with this metric? Ask community members what kind of help they would appreciate in the project through a survey and a focus group discussion or discussion. Do we need to break those out into two separate ones or is that okay to leave it as one? I would, I would uh, uh, make this as uh, the metric is ask community members what kind of help they want, would appreciate in the project. And then we can have a method here mm. where we talk about how that's actually done. Okay. Sounds good. And as we were discussing this, it kind of gave me more context for how we might want to frame this first metric, which is this seems more of like a community contributed uh, like analysis. And this is more of like a top down analysis. And both are probably very useful. So this instead of role coverage and community, maybe we can say like top down analysis of role coverage in community. Yeah, I think that's fair. Okay. I think and that distinction we... is really helpful too. Yes. Is there a particular group that we suggest doing this or yeah, or like the method? Is that all of this? Any other thoughts on how we might do this? This is the top-down analysis. Yeah, the top-down analysis. Well, we have one method here. Okay. Okay, let's just leave it as this 
Um, I suppose whoever is doing, like this would either be the promotions group or the foundation, like the, the staff members or something. Okay, let me just make a note about this. Um, Okay. The issue I, I see here is that maybe at number three, <clears throat> how exactly maybe promo or other staff members can um, like evaluate if the role is being executed and to what extent in a good way. Like I'm not sure how number three there, there plays out in terms of evaluating the work of people. Yeah, that's a good Does point. That, maybe it makes sense in terms of if you have a manager of people or something like that, but if it's another group, let's say in the community, somehow considering how another group in the community is doing their thing, that might complicate things. Yeah, and I think that maybe for number three, how you get that information is more about is, is in this metric when you actually discuss with them. I, I, I wonder if it's still important for a top level like perspective on how well it's being executed though, of saying like, okay, well the release team, they get a release, so I guess it's fine, <laughs> you know, like, or we don't have any kind of promotion or like we don't have any social media that's not being done, you know, sort of a thing. So like they at least have some sort of top level idea and then you'll get more information when you do the discussion. Does that make sense? Yeah, like, uh, like taking the one step further, I was thinking like maybe what the promo team here could do is figure out to what extent the, the team, each team is collaborating with them to promote maybe their own project and their needs and things like that. So instead of just evaluating yeah. the team, you're like evaluating the relationship or the collaboration level of the promo team, since this is what we're talking about here, with each individual team within the wider project. Yeah, I like that a lot. Maybe instead for three, I do think these are separate ideas maybe we can like reword this to say like the, the promo team identifies gaps or do you think that we can just replace three with four? What do you, what do y'all think? I see both happening. I mean, gaps and maybe pain points could be something we're considering at this stage, especially in a top-down analysis of things. Yes, love that. Okay, good idea. Yeah, I think there are two different things. One is, or, or number three is about the work being done in the different teams. And then four is how the promo team can support them. Perfect. Yeah, that's really good. Okay. Uh, anything else before we consider this one good for now? Nope, okay. I'm just trying to figure out, oh, here we go. So just a moment to get back to editing. All right, so now we have two metrics. Next metric in this is list of tasks that are not getting done, then consider the skills needed to work on those tasks. Yeah, I guess this is more or less the same we had in the beginning, right? That way it's like that. Yes. Is it at all different? Maybe this seems more of like a deliverable. It could be a method for the top-down analysis. So instead of looking at the role level, we can look at the issue tracker level. It could be a second method for that metric. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move that up. Wait, the whole thing? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. So let's do here. Method two. Yeah. I mean, and I guess this is already being taken on by promo teams, so I'll just delete that note. Okay, cool. Anything else to add here? For that second metric, can we resolve the discussion or work it somehow into the description? Or is the idea to have the discussion here and then use it in the blog post, but not move it into the GitHub? Good question. Um, I think that's good for a blog post of like why you need both. Should we add a comment there and then move it out once we have a blog? Let's do that. Yeah. That's the easiest first iteration. Okay. Move this into the blog post. We can use it to frame why we need both qualitative and quantitative data as well. But yeah, that's it. Cool. Okay. Great. Cool. Ming. Moving through it. Great pro progress. Mm -hmm. Can I delete those three? metric descriptions here at the top. Yes. Sweet. Makes me feel better. <laughs> Great. Okay, so question number two, we're still under recruit new contributors. What roles and responsibilities do we not yet, do we have not yet covered well? Hmm. That feels like we can answer with the same metric. What skills yeah. we need to recruit for? I feel like question yeah. 1.2 is a better question for the metrics we have. And it yes. seems to overlap with what we are doing at the um, role coverage, top down analysis, I guess. Yes. So shall we just go ahead and move this up? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna do it. Here we go. Okay, so now let's see what other metrics we had for this. Okay, metric roles and responsibilities coverage. So this is the diagram, the network diagram. So let's what was this community SWAT idea? Oh, this was, uh, was this part of the discussion, like organize a SWAT? I think community SWAT, Ooh. as in the strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats analysis yes. is, um, that was a name we had given it, um, but we didn't really like the idea of calling it a SWAT analysis. At least I didn't like the idea. And moving this up to, I think, ask the community members what kind of help they would appreciate. This could be community SWOT analysis BOF or something during a conference, or I don't know, maybe that's like a even during a BOF or. I'll, I'll agree here with Georg that like having a short analysis for a project or a plan, it's good. Maybe for a community, we could pick a better work or something, but yeah. It makes sense well, to understand specific, what we're trying to do there, yeah. Yeah, right. So, so I think it would be strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats specific to recruiting. And that would then help you 
understand what your strengths are as a community in terms of roles. Isn't that the idea? It's a specific framework. So that's why it would be a method as opposed to a metric. Yeah, we have used it in, in different ways. Um, I, I don't think community SWOT analysis exists as a method that we can reference without defining what we mean by it. At least it's not a very popular method if it does exist. So we have some flexibility whether we want to analyze you know, our recruiting efforts using the SWOT method, whether we want to analyze our community to identify where we need to recruit, what kind of things we need to recruit. I think those are the two different ways that we could use SWOT here meaningfully. Yep, both how to, how current recruiting. Yeah, I like that a lot. Current recruiting methods are going and and which roles are needed. Um, so maybe to further define this, two separate SWATs, whoops, <laughs> SWATs could be understand current recruiting methods and Okay, can you all read through this and make sure that it makes sense? Okay, perfect. Okay, great. So now um, another method is this about roles and responsibilities coverage. Uh, this is the network diagram. I'm just going to rename this to network diagram of community of what community roles. and tasks. I think, I think it's more about the roles here than the tasks. Sorry, Jack. Yeah, I was thinking it would fit in with the top down metric. That this would, yeah. Instead of right now, we're looking at the discussion stuff. So I think that makes sense. This would be part of the top down. Good call. Whoa. Okay, let's pull this out. Although this is specifically calling out survey each member. So I guess that's still a, I don't know, kind of a mix then. So I think what we are 
yeah, when we go through this again, we're out of time for today. When we go through this again, maybe we can have a one-to-one -one match uh, for each method that we've identified and backfill what question, what metric that would be and give it different names. What do you mean give it different names? Um, in right now we have um, the question, what roles responsible to be have not yet covered well and want to recruit for. And then one mess, one metric is chop, chop, <laughs> a top down analysis of role coverage and community. Maybe another metric is uh, network analysis network analysis of community. And then we, did, we have the method underneath that metric, um, just so that for each method, we have one metric. Might help us communicate better what we're doing. Hmm. Okay, because I thought that these were all under the top down analysis category. Yeah. But okay, so these would essentially be like metric 1.2, or I don't even understand this. <laughs> Sorry, we can, we can just ignore all my numberings. Okay. I'll remove it again. I'm just thinking out loud. Maybe this is not the way to go. Okay, so maybe as like we end because we're at time, we should, um, let's write down our notes here. So um, next time, pick up where comment says <laughs> to do so. And then um, we also need to um, figure out whether we break out metrics further and if we name each one. Also figure out numbering. Um, okay, anything else? Nope. Okay. Nope. Great. Awesome. Thank you. Really good. Cool. Good progress. Looks a lot cleaner than we started. Yep. <laughs> Definitely. And thank you, Noritzi, for driving this. No problem. Yeah. I like driving meetings. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> With that. <laughs> I am going to go to Mendocino this weekend, so I'm really excited. I'm going to go get some hiking and uh, wine tasting in. So I hope you all have a great rest of your week, too. <laughs> Thank you. Have fun. Yes, Thank you. Everyone. All right. It was great Bye, seeing everybody. you again. <laughs>